video we're going to take a look at how to set up invoice elements, which are typically footer totals on an order, such as freight or delivery, surcharges, whatever. Um, these can be set up on sales invoices or sales orders through sales invoices and <clears throat> purchasing orders through invoices, so on both sides, and they're set up basically the same way. So we'll take a look at the setup <clears throat> for this particular customer. Uh, we To access the setup, you go into setup, and then on the sales side, we go under the sales group and invoice elements. On purchasing side, which we'll look at here, same thing, purchasing invoice elements. So once in here, we have um, a number of invoicing elements. I think there is a limit to these. Um, I'm not sure if it's five. It might be controlled by a parameter or activity code. Um, so the first invoice element we choose, let's say freight charges here, or we can add to this list by selecting new over here. Um, it's given a number. We, we give it a description, a short description, and um, a product reference here. This is just for like business intelligence purposes. Um, not really, that's an add-on, standard X3 things. So they'll be ignored. Whether it's active or not, <clears throat> whether your invoice elements are subject to discounts. So if you're offering discounts on your products, um, you can determine whether if you're adding a, if you're giving a 10% product on a 10% discount on a product and you charge them freight, if you're going to also apply the discount for the freight, usually that's not checked and rebate on that won't be used in the U S. So then you have the value type. You can select either percent or amount and whether it's going to be an increase or decrease. So on purchasing, it's an increase. Um, you know, again, whether you're offering a discount or an increase, it can be either way. So, you know, purchasing, like if I go to discount here, switch over to discount, it's a decrease. So you can put in a default value. So if you um, go to enter, you know, select a freight charge on sales order as an invoice element, and you can pre-populate it with whatever's here in your source. <clears throat> this is your business partner. You can sometimes have different um, invoicing and ordering um, bill to. So normally this doesn't change from order supplier. Even if you change it to invoice supplier, it would be the same. Um, so calculation basis. This happens to... Um, so next is your calculation basis. This is only... Valid if you're using a percent type. If I select percent, it becomes active. So you've got to choose whether it's going to be inclusive of tax or not. So your element presence, you can have the element um, invoice elements on lines individually or on in the footer. Typically, it's used in the footer. Whether it is using stock valuation. So if you charge the customer $10 for freight and the, the product was $10, that's now $20. So <clears throat> when you receive that stock in on the purchasing side, um, when it goes into stock, it would be, if this is yes, that would be going to value at $20. If it's no, it's just going to go for the line amount, which would be 10. So that's an option you have to decide as well for stock valuation. Transferring, this is where you transfer it from one document to another. So from like purchase order to the receipt to the invoice. Those are three documents. Now you could have a purchase order with 10 lines and receive one line. Okay. But you could have an invoice element on the original purchase order for let's say $100. You have to determine, okay, I've only received a portion of this. What portion of the invoice element will get applied to this one line and carry over. That's what this is about. Amount prorated just means it'll be based on quantity. So it'll disregard dollar values of the lines and it'll just be based on quantity. So if you have a hundred items and you receive one of the hundred in in your invoice element is a hundred dollars, it'll pass that one dollar on with that product based on a quantity. Now you can also change it to um, um, well, actually, the default here is amounts, so it, it will pass it on based on the portion of the dollar amount. You can change it to quantity. You can change it to weight. If 
if it's you know um, a factor or volume um, the first document are all documents so then you have an accounting code that goes with it that determines how it posts a distribution key this will split the um, the analytical lines from one into multiple if that were set up and then if you're using analytical dimensions you would put them in here um, again the line distribution um, let's see yeah we're order footer so um, this again has to do with this value up here the um, this transfer rule and tax calculation so you can carry along the um, the sales tax if, if the invoice element has to be taxable you can choose a fixed rate and what that tax level is or you can choose um, it to be based on whatever product so you can have multiple products with multiple tax rates so if you had two different lines on your purchase order that had different tax levels or let's say one was taxable one wasn't let's say they were both a hundred dollars for quantity one each um, and you set the tax rule based on product rate while only half of the dollar amount would be taxable if you use the fixed rate then all of it would be taxable based on your element tax level. So those are invoice elements. Um, works the same way on the sales side. Um, you just got to make sure they're active. And once they are, they will show up in the purchase orders or sales orders.